Okay. Uh, welcome to the room B of the third day, 30 September of uh, second world conference on uh, by product of Palm or by Palma. My name is Dr. Norisham Hamid and I'm chairman of the session B5 composite. Okay, the list of the presenter for this session is uh, Dr. Nur Afidah bin Nordin from UC Tenaga Malaysia, Dr. Nur Azlin Ramli from UC Putra Malaysia, Dr. Norisham Hamid myself from UC Putra Malaysia, Dr. Nur Yuziah Muhammad Yunus from UC Technology Mara, Malaysia. And lastly, by Dr. Hamid es Sabil from Maskir, Morocco. Eh? So as informed by the secretary, our presenter is giving 15 minutes for our presentation, another five minutes for Q&A session. We start our session by calling Dr. Nur Afifah Nordin from UC Naga National Malaysia to present for her topic on Chemically isolated cellulose nanocrystal from different parts of oil palm front. Okay. okay. Dr. Uh, are you here? Dr. Nur Afifah? Yeah, yeah okay. I'm here. Okay. okay, thank you, Dr. Hisham. Uh, unfortunately, I uh, Zoom cannot detect my camera, so I cannot turn on my video. Is my screen visible now? Yes, yes. Okay. Can you make, me, uh, make it bigger? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll put in slideshow. All right. Sorry. Okay, my name is Noor Afifah Nordin. I'm from University Tenaga National Malaysia. My ID number is um, 98 and the title of my presentation is chemo mechanically isolated cellulose nanocrystals from different parts of oil palm fronts okay here is the presentation outline uh, it consists of some introduction about uh, oil palm fronts uh, as well as cellulose nanocrystals, or we call it CNC in short. And then I will share uh, some potential applications of CNC, followed by methodology on how to produce CNC from OPF. And then uh, some results and discussions will be covered and the conclusion to sum up on the findings also included some acknowledgement and references used uh, in this presentation. So um, I think uh, most of us in Malaysia, we are aware that uh, Malaysia is, has the second largest oil palm plantation area uh, in the world after Indonesia. So um, this uh, leads to the oil palm biomass to become the major contributor of agricultural waste in Malaysia. So the oil palm biomass, it can be obtained in the forms of fronds, trunks, empty fruit bunches, mesocarp fibers, and et cetera. And uh, the reason why uh, oil palm fronds or, or OPF is chosen to be used in this work is because it contributes to about 75% of the total oil palm biomass. And uh, it is available throughout the year whereby uh, it was generated after harvesting the oil palm fruits. And another reason is that uh, uh, it is abundant, inexpensive, and also renewable. So the main uh, reason it is suitable to be used for uh, the extract for the treatment to produce cellulose nanocrystal is because it is highly fibrous in nature with a cellulose content of approximately 50%. So CNC or cellulose nanocrystal, it has become like one of the widely researched um, topics in lignocellulosic area uh, owing to its excellent mechanical properties, uh, its biodegradability as well as biocompatibility. So meaning that it is um, suitable to be incorporated in various applications. So uh, here are some of the potential applications of CNC. You can see here in the top is uh, it is used as a food packaging. Uh, in biomedical uh, field, it can also be used as a wound healing biofilm. So this is the bone scaffold where uh, it is used for patients who suffer from bone injuries. And this is quite common for all of us. I think the composites, uh, the CNC is usually used as a reinforced 
zinc material in composites. So this composite can be used for structural buildings as well as in automotive uh, applications. Uh, here is the one of the um, potential application where they use it as a filtration membrane. For example, uh, they use this membrane to treat uh, wastewater. And this is quite interesting because uh, there are some commercialized uh, product that use cellulose nanocrystal as a biocellulose mass for health and beauty concern. So here's the um, methodology on how uh, the CNC is prepared uh, from the OPF. So this is the illustration of one single oil palm front. Firstly, the leaf were uh, remove and then this one will cut into three different parts, which are the top, the middle, and the bottom parts. And then this um, OPF sample will then chip and dry it in the oven to remove its moisture content. After then, it was grounded and sieved before it was further used for uh, extraction process. In the extraction process, we want to remove uh, the uh, some of the, of the extractives and also uh, residual contaminants. So we use chocolate extraction by using ethanol and toluene as solvent with a ratio of two to one according to ASTM, ASTM standards. So uh, after uh, extraction process, the samples were dried and then it was uh, subjected to bleaching treatment by using sodium chloride and also acetic acid. So the bleach samples uh, after that were subjected to hemicellulose removal uh, by using 6% of potassium hydroxide for 24 hours. So once the hemicellulose was removed from the sample, this is the most important part where we did the acid hydrolysis by using sulfuric acid for 60 minutes at 44 degrees Celsius. So after this hydrolysis treatment, uh, we need to further neutralize the sample by using dialysis tube and then once it reached pH around five to six, we then um, subjected the sample for freeze drying before it was further characterized. So the characterization that is covered in this presentation is its morphology, crystallinity, thermal properties, as well as data potential analysis. So here are some findings of this work. Um, the morphology uh, of these samples is um, determined by using SEM as well as TEM. So figure one is SEM of top, middle, and bottom parts of raw oil pump fronts. This is the raw material. So I want to um, share here that this is the vascular bundles, the round shape one, and then it is surrounded by parenchyma. P is parenchyma. So you can see this is parenchyma. This is vascular bundles. It can be observed here that the top part of the OPF, the raw OPF, it contains higher proportion of vascular bundles compared to the middle and bottom parts. Okay, and then for the figure number two, it shows the TEM analysis or images of the top, middle, and bottom parts of CNC from OPF. So we can see here are the fibers, or we call it cellulose nanocrystals. Um, it is not agglomerated. It is uh, in individual form, so it is easily measured. So here, we measure the length and diameters of this CNC, and we found that uh, there are some variations in top, middle, and bottom part of OPF CNC, in which the top part has the lowest aspect ratio, and then the bottom part has the highest aspect ratio. So the reason behind this is because the fibers from vascular bundles were easily broken during the acid hydrolysis treatment compared to the spherical parenchyma here. So when the sample has higher proportion of uh, vascular bundles, it is easier to be treated and um, disintegrated. Moving on to the crystallinity of uh, the sample, we can see here that the top part of OPF CNC had the highest crystallinity index, which is uh, about 63%, followed by middle 61 and bottom part is about 55%. So the difference in crystallinity index 
is attributed to the anatomical structure of the OPF samples and also the distribution of vascular bundles and parenchyma cells because vascular bundles are more fibrous while parenchyma is spongy and contains more starch. That is the reason why the top part has um, greater crystallite size. And then moving on to the thermal properties. So uh, they also have the similar trend like crystallinity and that's in which the top part uh, has the highest onset temperature, which was 274, and then followed by middle and bottom part. So it is explained by, uh, since the top part of OPS, OPF CMC had greater crystallized size, like uh, depicted by the previous slide, it subsequently improved the thermal stability of the nanocrystals. And then the last one is zeta potential analysis. This is conducted uh, to evaluate the colloidal stability of this uh, echo suspension of CNC. It is measured by the electrostatic repulsion of the cellulose after it was subjected to acid hydrolysis treatment. So you can see here that the bottom part had the highest zeta potential value, making it having the best dispersion among all the samples. So the reason why is that is because of the sulfur content. So we know that sulfate groups. Uh, so not too far. You have uh, another three minutes, eh? Okay, okay. Uh, we know that uh, sulfate group is negatively charged. So when there are more sulfate group on uh, attached to the CNC, so they would repulse each other and uh, resulted in good uh, colloidal stability. So as for the conclusion uh, from overall findings, I can say that the OPF was successfully treated to produce CNC by chemo mechanical treatment. And the TEM images displayed size reduction and good dispersion of the CNC. The top part uh, has the highest crystallinity and that's also best thermal properties. And to sum up, we can say that anatomical structure of oil pump biomass have some impacts on its properties attributing to the dis distribution of vascular bundles and parenchyma cells. So I would like to acknowledge uh, University of Science Malaysia and University of Tenaga National for the support provided. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, to Dr. Noor Afifah eh? no yeah. for her presentation. So uh, for uh, Q&A session, I would like to have maybe one or two questions <laughs> from the audience. Uh, you can type in the chat room or you can yeah, you can chat. Uh, type in the chat room. Huh? Any question? So we have a questions. Uh, a question from uh, Professor Kais. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, good mo good morning. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Doctor Afifa, for this uh, great. Uh, uh, presentation. I have just uh, some uh, question. Did you have an idea about, about the yield of the uh, the cellulose nanocrystals from the cellulose when you characterize first the comp chemical composition of uh, the sources of uh, cellulose? What is the yield of cellulose mm -hmm. nanocrystals? This is uh, my first question. And uh, uh, the the, the second, uh, uh, I did uh, respond just for this, uh, and I will ask you the second question if uh, there is the time. Thank you. Okay, the yield uh, that I got from this work is about forty-six percent. Okay, thank you. Uh, just uh, <clears throat> you know, we talk about the cellulose nanocrystals and its rigidity. It's it have the high mechanical properties. How can we characterize the, the rigidity of the cellulose nanocrystals or just we use the fundamental between the energy of interaction between the molecule composed the cellulose nanocrystals? Um, usually we characterize because we cannot uh, characterize one single uh, cellulose nanocrystal because, because it is in nano uh, size, right? So usually we incorporate this uh, CNC into maybe some um, biopolymers. So from there, uh, we can characterize the mechanical properties of that polymer in order to see how it affects the properties of that particular biocomposite or, or maybe some biofilm. 
So this uh, CNC is usually used as reinforcement. So maybe okay. we can vary the, the percentage of uh, CNC and then see how it affects the pro mechanical properties. Thank you. But in this case, we assume that the adhesion at the interface is perfect. Uh, sorry, again, bro? In this case, when we characterize the rigidity of cellulose nanocrystals by using yes. the biopolymers as biocomposites, we assume that the adhesion at the interface is perfect. Okay. 